In computer networking, a subnet refers to splitting a single network into multiple smaller networks. To illustrate the concept, I'll compare a network with many devices to a town with many houses. Each house has its own unique address, just like every device has its own unique IP address. The town is split up into subdivisions. The subdivisions are still part of the town, but they probably have some characteristics that are unique. There may be special rules that have to be followed. There may be specified services that are provided based on the members that live there. And information specific to that subdivision will be sent out just to them and not everyone in town. The subdivisions in the town are like subnets on a network. There are times when it's helpful to divide a big network into smaller networks. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll explain subnets and how they work. Next. Why segment your network into subnets? Subnets are an efficient use of IP addresses. They manage network traffic more effectively. Broadcast traffic that is relevant to one subnet only needs to be sent to that subnet. Subnets also provide the benefit of security, creating barriers between different sections of your network. Devices in separate subnets won't be able to communicate with each other. Unfortunately, nothing is perfect. Subnetting can get complicated to configure or adjust. Now, with every subnet, there needs to be a specified subnet mask. The subnet mask distinguishes the portion of the IP address that is the network portion, as well as for hosts. There are two ways to represent a subnet mask, in dotted decimal notation or with a slash. So in a slash 24 network, the first 24 bits, the first three octets of the IP address, should all be the same since the subnet mask shows 255 for each. That designates the network portion. The zero in the last octet shows the host portion. For a long time, all networks were either a slash eight, slash 16, or slash 24. These were called classful networks. When a network didn't require all the addresses, the rest went to waste. About 30 years ago, classless interdomain routing, CIDR, was introduced, and subnetting became an option. This game changer allowed you to create subnets of different sizes, helping conserve IP addresses and provide more efficient routing. You can create subnets for class A through class C networks, for class C, this is a table of the subnet options. Notice how the subnet mask changes in dotted decimal and slash notations as more subnets are added. As you add subnetworks, the number of hosts available for each network goes down. On a side note, a slash 31 is only used in point-to-point -point links. For this topology, I have a wireless router, a switch, and three endpoint devices, or hosts. I'm using a class C network of 192.168.1.0 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, which can also be represented as a slash 24. The wireless router, switch, and PC1 are part of the same IP subnet, so they'll be able to communicate with each other. However, laptop one will not be able to communicate with the other devices as it belongs to a different network address. The three in the third octet shows that. PC2 will not be able to communicate with the switch as they are in different IP subnets. If you want to enable communication between laptop one and the rest of the network, you simply need to change its network address. Change the IP address of laptop one to 192.168.1.60 with a slash 24. And that's all there is to it. For PC2, you simply change the subnet mask to slash 24 and you're set. After these changes, both laptop one and PC2 can communicate across the network. Having control over your network can be powerful. Now you know what subnets are and how they can work for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.